You are tuning in to the world's number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast on YouTube. This is Mind Pump. Okay, we got a great giveaway for you today. Okay, oh, yeah. here's what you got to do to be able to win this incredible prize. Uh, by the way, uh, the prize is a MAPS workout program. It's MAPS Strong, one of our more popular workout programs. Great for building the body, functional strength. A lot of people like this program because it develops the upper back, shoulders, and butt area really, really well. Um, a lot of women actually like this program. Of course, guys too. All right, here's how you can enter to win this. In this episode, uh, Justin tells a story about his son improving girls, doing things to improve, excuse me, to impress girls. Um, so tell a story in the comments of stupid things you've done in the past to impress someone from the opposite sex. I know you have a stupid story, so go ahead and leave one. Make it funny. If it's in the first 24 hours and Doug picks it, you'll win a free Maps Strong program. By the way, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications because when we post these videos, we give away things all the time. If you get on there late, you miss out. So you want to know when we post uh, videos. Also, before this episode starts, uh, we are running a promotion on two workout programs and a bundle, all of them 50% off. All right, so here's the ones that are on sale. Maps Hit, Maps Split, and the Bikini Bundle. You can go check these out at mapsfitnessproducts.com, and you have to use the code Spring Break. Go check it out. All right, enjoy the show. Make it funny. How's my camera look, Doug? Do the hug. Do I still look pumped a little bit? You look fat. The fuck. You look fat. I don't look fat. Do you do you get um, a discount on those shirts because you the mediums like that? Mm -hmm. Is that why you buy the smaller sizes? Is it, are it's they a medium, are dude. they cheaper? No, it's not a medium. Sure, it it's is. A, no, it's not, dude. It's a large. It's a shrunk large. Then. No, it's a real large. Yeah, dude, get a shirt that fits you, bro. This is, wrap. Let me explain something to you about about you know muscles. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is a large. Although, hey, be honest right now. Large. You, no, no, no. Be, oh, okay. Okay, okay. All right. Be honest. All right, I won't lie. Shmedia. Okay, you really? 100%. You were the guy, okay, when you went to parties, mm. if you ever were invited, mm -hmm. you were the guy that <laughs> did push-ups in the bathroom. No. <laughs> Don't fucking lie. Oh. I didn't do... You know what? Okay, here's why... I know I, you did. No. Here's why I never did push-ups in the bathroom. <laughs> I'll explain Justin, myself. you believe him? At a party... Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I believe him. Okay. <laughs> this is stupid. <laughs> this is so stupid. What do you mean it's stupid? Yeah. I'll tell you why that's not true. <laughs> okay. okay. Two okay. And you'll believe me. Okay. You okay. will believe me. Because you didn't get invited to parties. No. Number <laughs> one, number one, the reason why I wouldn't do push-ups in the bathroom is in those days, I thought any additional exercise or activity would hamper my recovery <laughs> and my gains. So for sure, I would not do yeah. extra oh, but you might have, waste. You might have slammed a steak in the bathroom then. Uh, what? Uh, Why would uh, I eat a steak in the bathroom? Uh, <laughs> what a gross those, place. I need do. those calories. I don't uh, want to lose any no, muscle. No, yeah. so I didn't do it because it, I wouldn't even have thought of it. And also, pumps don't last. I mean, how long is a pump going to last? I'd have to go to the bathroom every Long enough minutes. to go talk to the girl in the kitchen. Mm. Oh, no, bro. Mm. I got a mouthpiece. Mm. I don't need muscles for that. Mm. It's like, mm. you know what I mean? You need jaw yeah. muscles. Huh? I, yeah. yeah. I think you're lying to me. No. Did you do push-ups in the bathroom? I did. Yeah. No. Before we were in the club. You're just trying to project your shit on me. Of course. <laughs> of course. That's why. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I admit it, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was that guy. Well, he's putting you know, the puka But I was like 15. Yeah. I still think you do those push-ups in the bathroom right no, now. I I'm don't. pretty sure you do. Before the podcast? Yes, before the podcast, they do. <laughs> I don't look Because like everybody that. thinks that. Everyone's just like, they think Sal's the buff guy. Then we get in person. They're like, oh, shit. Justin and Adam are the yeah, buff guy. Yeah. What happened? And they're like, what the fuck? You're yeah. like, yeah, that's because Justin and I don't do push-ups in the bathroom no before we podcast. No one ever said that. Illusions. No one's ever said It's all lights and illusions. Push ups in small shirts. Yeah, a, lot of, <laughs> a lot of jealousy going on. Hey, uh, you guys want to hear something? So jealous. You guys want to hear one of the scariest things that ever happened to me? What? Yesterday. Really? Oh my God, bro. Terrifying. Okay, so we're we're doing sleep training with the baby right now, right? Which, you know, I don't, that, you know that sucks, right? Because the baby cries and you do the whole thing. You go in, let them know you're there, what, leave. What, okay, yeah. What's the, explain what's the, the pro protocol? Yeah, yeah, let's hear your protocol because there's like a million ways to do <clears> sleep yeah. training. So we put, so what we do is we, when he, when he shows signs of being sleepy, yawning, you know, rubbing his eyes, the whole deal, um, you know, we'll, we'll go and put them down. We'll get them all set up. We'll put them down and then we'll leave. And inevitably right now he'll start crying because he's used to falling asleep on mom all the time. Right. And that's just, this not sustainable. He's, he's getting, you know, he's older now. It's time for him to learn how to fall asleep on his own. Um, so when we put him down, he'll start crying. We'll wait five minutes. If he's crying consistently, relatively consistently for five minutes, we'll go back in the room let him know that we're here. Hey, buddy, I'm here. I love you. Listen, it's time to go to sleep. It's time to go night night. And then we'll walk back out and we'll repeat this process until he falls asleep. 
And that can take, the first time we did it, it took over an hour, but it seems to be getting better. Each time it's shorter and shorter. In fact, yesterday, which is remarkable, Jessica put him down and he fell on his own, fell right asleep, which he would have never done before. But anyway, that's not the story. So here's the story, right? So we have a baby monitor that, you know, the little camera that go, that you can see on the bed and see what Did he's doing. Did you have the same thing that happened to you? Hold on. So I got the baby monitor on the bed and I moved his, his because he's got like a bassinet or whatever. It's like a big pack and play so he could sleep next to us. Yeah, yeah. And then he has a crib in his room. So we're I'm angling the 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 pack and play so that he can't see me in bed when I go to bed later because we're still doing the whole sleep thing. If he knows I'm there, he's just going to cry the whole time. So he has to kind of feel like he's on his own for a little bit or whatever. So I'm angling it. Because I'm angling it, I'm moving the camera to make sure I can see where he's at. So this is at night. So this is like 7.30 at night and you know 8 o'clock at night. We're about to put him down. So I move the, the pack and play. I set up the camera or whatever. I turn on the monitor and I see like, oh, cool. I could see his bed. This is cool. No problem. I put him down, go downstairs, and we're chilling. And he starts to cry. So I check the monitor. No baby. All I hear, <laughs> all I hear is crying. No baby on the monitor. So I immediately sweat imme- and, ju- and I run upstairs like a monster because oh, I hear man. my baby crying. No one in the bed. I'm going to kill someone or I don't know what happened. What's going on? Do the monitor so, freeze? So I fucking run up there, dude. Like I took two steps up my entire staircase. Like one, two, I'm at the top. Hmm. And he's in there screaming. And I'm like, what the fuck? I look at the camera or the monitor. No baby. And here's what happened. <laughs> we have two cameras. One in his room. Oh, it connected to the other Bluetooth. Bro. <laughs> scared <laughs> the... Shit. It's just like what happened to me. Bro. Remember when I told you that story God, when I was in dude. there? And, I, yes. and, and all of a sudden I hear this clunk, this sound, and then the thing froze, and then he wasn't in the Oh my God, oh, dude. Man. Oh, I was in the room. I was in the room with him. I just, it was pitch black. I couldn't see anything. Oh my yeah. God, dude. I'm He's like, been so, abducted by aliens. Someone took my baby. You know, see, now what's funny about that to me is that that, that technology is fairly recent. Right, yeah. I mean, when you had yeah, your first kids, yeah, I didn't kids, have any of that. Yeah, well, I didn't have that either. My brother and sister, when they were little, we only had the monitors where you could yeah, you hear. Could hear. Yeah, yeah, that's all you could hear. So yeah. you just hear mm-hmm. crying and be like, "Ah, oh, he's okay." Yeah, he's and the a, cameras he's alive. And the cameras now, <laughs> right. they show the temperature of the room. Oh yeah, they show night vision, so it's dark and you can see everything. It's crazy. Which yeah. you feel like, I mean, you have a little bit more control over, but also it, it controls you more. Like, do, do you feel that way in terms of like have like seeing all that stuff versus just oh, hearing hey, a, a for cry. sure oh, for sure bro. Yeah. I get I actually get I get upset at Katrina because it scares the shit out of me because anytime like a thump or anything happens, she like sits up <gasps> in bed and does that sound yeah, and I'm ugh. like like right when I'm like falling asleep that's the worst and it it, it yeah. jolts me out of bed and I wake up like right away because I'm it's thinking like someone, adrenaline yes and then, <laughs> and then I can't, you can't go, go back I can't go back to sleep for yeah. like another hour or two and I'm no. like oh my God, honey I was like. This is he's gonna bump his head. He's gonna kick the th- wall. Well, this is gonna happen for a bro, long time. Your psychology yeah. is very. You have to. You have to understand your psychology. A baby's cry. First of all, the reason why it's so hard to listen to versus other noise. We are wired to not like a, a baby's cry. To want to help them. To feel, you know, pain or fear when we listen to it. This is why when you're on a plane with a baby crying, it's like it drives you crazy because you're you're having this this conflicting feeling. It's not my baby. I can't stand. It. Please help the baby. Make it stop crying. Whatever. So when you're doing this with your kid and you're trying to train them to learn how to go to sleep and they're screaming and crying and you have a monitor with the speaker on and you're watching them, you're literally torturing the shit out of yourself. The best possible, this is what I had to do. I had to, I had to turn it way down mm-hmm. so his cry wasn't super loud on the monitor and I had to like look at it every <laughs> once in a while because here's what happened. I would be like, oh my God, he's been crying for too long. How long has it been? I look at the clock. Ten minutes. Uh, it feels like an have hour. You, have you turned it all? I, I remember I used to get in trouble because I would like you know try and like set the mood. I was trying to get some, <laughs> and I would turn the monitor. I like and then all the way off. You know, <laughs> I'm just like hey, and then Courtney would just stop and just be like hey, I thought I heard something. What? You turned this down. Like I would, and then done. You know, and then I'm like, oh no, no sex my for plans. You. So that's your Ruined. theory that we're wired that way. That's the reason why the plane thing bothers me so much. I don't think so. I think you're wrong. No, it's true. It, it just dri- it drives me crazy because I can't hear my audio book. That's why I'm fucking pissed. Well, I mean, <laughs> I'm not look, like I'm not like oh, I want to get up and help this baby. I'm like, dude, shut this kid up. Bro, or you shouldn't it, be taking him on a six hour flight. No, right now. it has been it has been proven. It has been proven that a baby's cry elicits a strong response, especially in women, but definitely in men. Uh, well, I know. 
I mean, shit. Oh, yeah. I mean, I remember Katrina, you know, lactating because some kid was crying in the grocery store. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like that. They're, they're definitely wired and connected that way. Oh yeah, dude. So it's like if you hear them screaming and it's you're there or it's loud and you're watching them the whole time. Oh my god. There's no way you'll be able to do it. No way. And it's funny because he's, you know, he's a he's a baby, and we're trying to teach. He's he's getting good at it. Only after one day, he's getting good at it, and mm-hmm. and he's getting more sleep. He's getting better sleep. But it doesn't matter, right? Even after he falls asleep and he wakes up, you know, I go get him, and I'm thinking to myself like, oh man, you know, did I scar him? And he's fine. He's laughing and smiling. <laughs> I'm like, he doesn't even remember. Do you got, have you guys introduced <laughs> him to brain FM yet? Yeah, we tried a couple times. Oh, we, that's and it does work religiously. Yeah, yeah, no, that's oh, a, you guys still. Oh, that's religiously. That's a like Katrina will not put him down unless we have all that. When we're driving, oh, we put it on. Oh, yeah, now we, the problem with driving and putting it on is I'm the one, I'm getting tired too oh, as yeah. I'm driving. Oh, oh yeah, because it works. Oh, well, yeah. yeah, we've actually used it uh, for the kids because of the you know remote learning and whatnot. Like, uh, just put. I told Courtney, oh focus. It's like I had to remind that that's one of those things that just it works and and you forget all about it as a tool like. Because there's been a lot of times where they're so distracted, and then oh, I don't want to do this. I'm like, dude, put that brain of him focus on, and uh, you know, you're the I, one that got me doing that because yeah. I didn't, I never used the focus, and you use the focus. I, think I use it like religious. You use that more. I was always yeah, using it, the sleep, and then you would come around here, you'd be riding or working, and you'd always have it on. I'm like, you know what? I haven't really tried that. It you got to give it about uh, ten minutes. I so need you put it, it I'm on. So scatterbrain, dude. I, it, it helps no, it, me so much. No, it works. You put it on, and then give it about ten minutes. It doesn't not right away. Uh, but about in about ten minutes, when you've been listening to it consistently, especially in headphones, mm-hmm. you're just you're very focused. It's legit. It actually works. Uh, yeah, it's super funny. Uh, so I, I've like Ethan has basically got himself like a little girlfriend, you know, and oh. so like it's been going back and forth, and the you know this. This whole COVID thing has been great for him. You know, he's uh, he's uh, been able to talk to this girl, and so he's like now trying to impress her with things. And it's so funny to watch, like you know what you know boys and little you know men come up with to try and impress girls. You know, and so he's just started to dance, and like so he does this like little Russian dance where you know how they like squat and then they hey hey hey, hey. and like like at some point she said like oh my god that's so great look at that and so, and so he's been like practicing this oh my God. <laughs> over and over and I'm like what are you doing and he just hey, 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 <laughs> like all over the house and I'm like, what the fuck why why Russian dance you know like out of any dance like he chose that because a girl do says she like I, do we yeah. ever grow out of that I don't think we ever grow out of that like, uh, if you ask Katrina she'll tell you like one of her her favorite funniest memories of me and her the one of the first dates or things that we ever did is I took her up to the snow and uh, we went up to Dodge Ridge and we went snowboard I took her snowboard it's first time she'd ever ridden but and I actually don't even remember this, but I'm, I definitely don't deny that I would do some stupid shit like this. I made her watch. I didn't make her. I put in my. I had a DVD player inside the truck. Uh, you know, videos. Hey, hey video, check me out. Yes, videos of me wakeboarding. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like what the fuck? Holding her hostage. Yeah, bro. I'm like, 30. You know what I'm dude, saying? Look I'm, how 30, awesome I'm, I was. I'm 30. You know what I'm saying? Like that's a, check out these sweet moves. Yeah, look like. at these sweet moves. I, I can't talk too much shit. I did that with a highlight reel. That's my right. football. See, we, we don't grow out of it. You don't grow out of it. And if you're a guy listening, oh, you're a fucking liar. You're a liar. You're a liar if you uh, don't do shit. Oh, like dude, that. I did. Oh, that's embarrassing. I remember when I did the the first uh, like it was that sales training I did for trainers, and I did it over here at Red Dot. Yeah. And Jessica came and watched, right? Yeah. yeah. And after we were done, she comes and whispers in my ear. You know, she's like, man. that turned me on the way you were you know doing that or whatever yeah. after that i'm always like hey babe how's your schedule look on this day because i'm gonna do another talk <laughs> <laughs> you want to come watch me do yeah, you come, come watch me do yeah, this anytime especially when you're younger though if a girl says wow i like that shirt or "Ooh, look at those shoes or whatever oh. guess what you're always gonna wear the Dude, shirt and the shoes 100 i mean like i i jumped at the opportunity to to you know, at near forty years old, to play football again with pads on and everything, just because I knew she'd never seen me do anything like that before, <laughs> and I knew it was going to be you know glorious once I was done. Now, did it work? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> it worked for like months for him afterwards. Don't you remember him talking about uh, it? Oh uh, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, I was totally. Like, he came into work glowing like every day for like yeah. a month or two. Yeah, almost, was, almost killed yeah. himself. Almost yeah. killed myself, yeah. dude. My Try, head was throbbing. I looked at his backseat of his truck. He's rolling around with his shoulder pads and shit back there. So <laughs> she's wearing my jersey. <laughs> You know, it's weird. It's just, you know, it works. It comes out of the bathroom. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, babe, look at my helmet. Does this still look good on me? This like, little mid-drift shirt that he's got. You know, it's exactly. funny. I've, I've heard people say this argument that if men weren't so obsessed with, like, trying to attract women and sleep with women, that we would be so advanced as a society. I completely disagree. 
I, I bet you a full 80% of every amazing innovation and invention oh, it's because was to impress women. 100%, sure. Dude. That's, I mean, that's, if you're a super We would still be cave If people. you're a super nerd and yeah. you're not athletic, that's, that's your flex. Yeah. That's your flex for like to show how smart you are. So yeah, it ain't no different. No, you know it's saying? not. Because yeah. I, I'm seriously, if, if if guys were just like didn't even care, like we'd be we'd still be cave people. I don't care. I'll just go hunt. Yeah, and chill over here. <laughs> just scratch eating. my beard. Yeah, yeah. I got a couple. <laughs> Leave me mice. alone. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, that's <laughs> that, that kills me. Yeah. yeah. But hey, so uh, I was reading an article. I feel like more and more sci-fi movie plots are real life. Like or, or old, coming into reality. Yeah, like old movie plots Orson Welles are actually and, yeah, happening right now. So at the San Diego, I think it's the San Diego Zoo, they just injected a bunch of chimpanzees and apes with an experimental COVID vaccine. So... What? Let's see what happens. Yeah, no, let's see what happens. Doesn't <laughs> that feel like a movie? It does. <laughs> this will prevent what them. What could go wrong? Yeah, yeah, let's see what happens. It's giving them, it, it, you know, an experimental When did they do this? They just did it. Oh, wow. Yeah, they just did it recently. So wow. I, don't, I, I don't get I it. I mean, monkeys are way physically dominant. We just don't make them smart. They just turn into Bigfoot. You know? Yeah, and they'll fuck us up. Did you yeah. see that uh, Texas pulled the uh, no mask? Yeah, they yeah, did. did. Do you now, know why that, they did that? No. So many Californians are moving over there. They're like, we need to scare the shit out of you. Yeah, I saw that <laughs> meme. It was so good. No, I didn't see that. Oh, dude, that was hilarious. <laughs> no. So I saw it, too. I got an email. Florida, too. Florida and Mississippi. It yeah. was funny. Everybody's oh, like, they, oh, Mississippi. Hey, who cares? They, yeah. <laughs> there's nobody like, out there. I'm like, I care. Did, did they? Uh, so wait a second. Wait, uh, The gyms. So did you guys see the gyms? Here are now open. They are, I think, limited capacity. Okay, so that's what I. So yeah, yeah, I indoors. Yeah, you yeah, have I, to schedule an appointment for indoor. I, I heard ten percent. Is that true? I don't know what? if it's ten percent or twenty. Yeah, Doug, I need you on the Google map, Google over here. I know you're trying to look at cameras and stuff like that, but I need you, because I thought it was. I thought we were rocking and rolling. Like I saw, I got the email, and then I had friends that were posting about it. Like it's on back to the gym. This and that. I'm like, oh, cool. Oh. My gym's back open. And then I was talking to a client of mine, and she said. Oh yeah, well ten percent, Adam. She goes. So if you hold your gym holds a hundred members, ten people are gonna be. I'm like, oh what? Yeah. Is it really ten percent? I mean, what do they consider the capacity? What's the, the number? Gyms are always small capacity. Like at Burnell Gym, which is one of the bigger gyms around here. Yeah. I think the, I think I've seen the capacity signs like two hundred and something. No way at a yeah. time. Yeah. So you're gonna have twenty people working out. Yes. In the whole gym. Yes. Well, so I know that other who was I think UFC gym didn't they take the approach where they're gonna charge a lot more. To uh -huh. kind of service that market to reduce the, the maybe the initially, yeah. I feel like that's probably the way to go. Um, I mean, let's see what happens, right? Because you have states like Texas and Florida loosening up or Full, opened up fully. And, and here's a cool thing: you can compare states uh, in Florida, California, and Texas. There's sim there's similar enough to where you could see what's working and what's not working. Yeah. And I mean, infection rates and stuff are, are worse in California. I love how people get mad at that. It's like, look, if you don't live there, why are you even mad? Because you know, like, let them figure it out. Yeah, and exactly. then yeah, yeah, and then if they're right, then you know, you got no leg to stand well, on. Well, dude, uh, Gavin Newsom, right, Governor of California, is like, oh, it's reckless, you know, for Texas. Oh, and he got roasted. He did. Dude. Somebody, oh. somebody uh, retweeted that with a picture of him when he went to the restaurant. And he was sitting inside when yeah. nobody else could. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, we haven't voted it? that moron out yet. He's. <laughs> He's still in I here, we dude. We can't get him out. No, they're doing. Uh, they're like doing a cockroach. I think they're doing the. Have they? They've reached the amount of uh, votes that they need, right, for the recall. Uh, they have, but here's the of course now oh, so they're, they, they're going through it like crazy to, to, to match up the signatures and make sure yeah. everybody's like wow they're putting that much effort into oh, of it. Of course, of course, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, uh, twenty five percent capacity. Oh, twenty five percent. Yeah, yeah. Which gyms is, and dance and yoga studios at ten percent. Oh, you're oh shit. Oh, your dance part. class, Justin. That's oh great. good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm back. Z Zumba, hey. Justin Zumba. <laughs> Shake them hips. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> what is it? Cake, uh, cakes and weights class. Yeah, cakes, cakes, cakes and weights. <laughs> crush have oh, you, I, I should do it heavy yeah. weights and cakes yeah. is, uh, is the class yeah. well I mean this is good for the gym uh, for the gym industry but I mean 10% is going to be pretty hard uh, I don't know I, they got hit so hard <sighs> how are they going to come back I don't know well I mean, if they, I mean I feel like if they made it this far yeah. If you made it this far, then you're you're you might be okay. I mean, because I, I I predict it's only going to get well, better. Well, right? the vaccines that the mRNA vaccines, right? The uh, God, what are the companies that did that? Moderna and uh, what's the other Pfizer. One? Pfizer. Okay, so those vaccines. I thought Johnson and Johnson was doing. They well, just hold on. did a new one. They did right. So the 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 ones that have been out, right? The mRNA vaccines. These are the ones where they 
the you know the M- the RNA goes into your your the one that's cells. Gonna, they're gonna mutate you in five years. No, that one. no that's, <laughs> not, that's not what they're. But they're they're remarkable. We have a bunch of ninja turtles fucking in fucking stop. five years. Ago. <laughs> stop, dude. I, I'm Michelangelo. Uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, why do I want to buy Microsoft products? What the hell? <laughs> yeah. No, the um, they're remarkably effective, extremely effective at preventing uh, COVID and uh, you know spread and all that stuff. Like insanely protective. Um, and short so far, the safety is actually also remarkable. The problem is you don't know long term effects. We won't know that for years. There's no way to test that unless you know we just. So I'm time. I'm like totally not following any of this. I'm like over all of it. I'm over the conversations that my buddies still want to have. I'm like I'm so done with all this stuff. Yeah. What 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 is going? I've heard that it's like mutating and changing anyway. So some of these vaccines don't even matter. You take a vaccine and then it's no. Mutated. They're still they're still pretty damn effective towards oh, all okay. the new variants. Okay. Uh, but, but they're so seriously like they're you're like ninety something percent protection. Which is incredible uh, for a vaccine. Now Johnson and Johnson, that you're 99 percent safe from already. Well, it's got to be pretty good. Well, actually, you still can get very sick and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Stop it, Adam. Now here's here, here's here's the other thing. Uh, so so the problem with those vaccines is they require two doses, and they require they need to be stored at extremely cold temperatures. They're hard to transport. Mm-hmm. So it's they're not super easy, right? Johnson and Johnson just came out with a vaccine. You don't need to store it uh, at these ridiculously cold temperatures. You don't have to have special refrigeration units, um, and it's only one shot. Now the difference is, the Johnson and Johnson vaccine, I believe, is sixty-six or seventy percent effective, which is still good by vaccine standards. And I believe it's the old way that they did vaccines. So it's not an mRNA vaccine. It's like a more traditional one. So for people who are afraid or, or worried about the the new breakthrough ones. Johnson and Johnson is uh, another option, and they're easier to to administer or whatever. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. I think California has already reached like twenty percent of the population has been vaccinated already. Yeah, yeah, um, which is pretty big. So. I like you. To, I'm going to continue to stir the pot and piss Doug off right now. So I I think that uh, you started some shit on the forum, and I think it's best to oh, hear. It's a good time. Yeah, I'd like to hear you defend yourself where, where you have a platform and you can talk because it you dropped kind of a bomb in there just to just to, I think probably stir stuff up and get conversation. So, by the way, that's what the private forum is for. If you want to get <laughs> controversial stuff, you got to go to the Mind Pump private forum. You could sign up and then and then yeah, you get to hear uncensored. We try and avoid it, yeah. but Sal likes to drop bombs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I mean, you you said something in there. You were basically uh, comparing the uh, the WAP song winning the song of the year, uh, and then meanwhile, Dr. Seuss six books are pulled off the shelves. Yeah. Explain why uh, how you can compare the two of them. Uh, so how, that, that was the defense right right now. You I see uh, there's a lot of people that are up in arms that are coming after you right I now. I think it's a sign of the lack of objective uh, morality uh, mm. that we have as a society. Very, okay, so here's the thing: it's very it's very important to have as a society at least a strong sense of objective common morality, mm. especially when you have so many different cultures right. and so many different types of people. Otherwise, we're going to be totally screwed. And what's happening is the goalpost continues to move. The standard continues to change. It's so... It's, it's, it's moral relativism. Yes. Like, you, know, you don't know where the end of it is, and, and it, it's just gotten to Bro. a point where I just I, I don't even know what people think Bro. is right and wrong Bro. anymore. 2017, Obama, in, in videos, was talking about how amazing Dr. Seuss books were. They're all incredible or whatever. Now you know six of his six of the books they pulled it themselves because they're like they see where things are going. And the like, publisher did yes, not the not yeah that, that's who pulled it. Yeah, it? because they're looking at the actual estate, I believe. Of I mean, do you, I, do you find that I don't find that surprising at all? I mean, we talked so for the audience that doesn't, they're know, just you, preemptively. You have known. your book coming, right? right? You've got your book coming around the corner. We wanted to have more of a controversial type of of cover. And you couldn't even get it passed by the publisher. No. We couldn't put we couldn't put a fat person on a treadmill. No, no, that no, no. was just fat, Body, fat shaming. They did. Yeah. They said that. That's ridiculous. Well, to me. so what I'm saying is what I what I'm saying. I, okay, I get that culture changes, but the what's happening is we're viewing everything through this really interesting lens, and we're not being consistent with it because, like you said, and by the way, I'm against uh, you know censorship completely. So uh, yeah, you know, wet ass pussy, right? Uh, mm. I. I think that song is insane, ridiculous. I think it's whatever. But I also think, fine, it exists. If you yeah. want to listen to it, go ahead. If you don't, 
You don't. And the argument is that men have been making songs just as just as bad for yeah, many yeah. many years. So too live crew and, and all no, that stuff yeah, that right, there. exactly. Me yeah. so horny. But my point like that. is that we, that our standards are very interesting uh, when it comes to some of the stuff. For example, here's another one. I'm, you, you open this can of worms, Adam. So this is your fault, right? So yeah, yeah, no. You have uh, oh, Doug's mad at me. You have that the you know the controversy with uh, Coca Cola training, saying how to be less white, and and you have a lot of people saying things about white people. You confirm people. that, by the way. I just it's I, true. Yeah, it's all. Yeah. Over the place. Yeah. It so, is. Okay. Yes. And that is, I mean, that's objectively racist, right? But yep. the definition of racism has now changed so much that, according to some people, you can't be racist against. Uh, white people only against certain yeah, this uh, is types a, a of new ideology. I see. I don't let up. it trigger me though. I just I think it's actually comical. It, it, is, it is. But my I like I want I want someone to explain to me it, how do I be less white? Yeah. Well, there's no logic behind it. That's so. what, that's what I mean. It's yeah. inconsistent. Wear my sombrero to work for now on, well, or what? <laughs> well, logic and reason are white traits yeah. apparently. Too, but so. I'm, what I'm saying is, it's just it's uh, this changing. You know, it, it, the goalpost keeps moving so fast. And it's just so insane that it's like, we're, okay, where do we stand? You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, Dr. Seuss books were written a long time ago. There's almost nothing that opinions didn't well, match at all. It's just kind of them. funny, too, because then you see, you go back and you'll see like uh, the Obama administration, and then they're, they, they're, they're, they're like uh, basically like taking um, all these people in and, and, and explaining to them they could learn all the life lessons from Dr. Seuss books. And that's so what it's I'm just saying. like, yeah. Oh, that's what you're saying. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's just, it's just, uh, it's inconsistent, is my point. Yeah. And you need, and here's, I'll, I'll give you an example, okay? In the, and then in you know in the early days of uh, uh, you know America, we had open borders essentially. They were pretty open. You could come here if you come here, and you land on our shores, you're here, right? And lots of people came from all over the world, but especially from Europe. The poor, disenfranchised from Europe came here, and we all got along, and the country flourished. But here's why: there was a common objective morality. Now, before you think to yourself, because it's a very ignorant thought, but I'll I'll, I'll clarify. Before you think to yourself, yeah, they were all white people. Okay, Irish people in the ninth, you know, early 1900s, late 1800s, Italians, Germans, uh, very different from each other. I mean, Europe almost destroyed itself twice in two world wars. They, none of you, you ask an Italian from 1900 if they have anything in common with Irish or German, they look at you and be like, you know, what are you talking about? Very, mm -hmm. very different. Mm -hmm. That they all came here. The reason why such different people were able to get along, work together, and the country grew and exploded was because everybody had this common belief in freedom and liberty. Very strong. Like, right. okay, you do your thing over there. I don't agree with it. You're not hurting me. Just don't take my stuff. Don't hurt me. Don't force me to do anything. And we'll do yeah, our own like thing. Yeah, it's like we were okay with differences. Yes. And, but you have to have a common base for that to work. So this Otherwise, is, you're screwed. So this is why I'm okay with, I mean- I think the publisher getting involved in doing that, I think, is a little ridiculous. I think if you're a school and that was part of your curriculum and then that's been brought to your attention that there's books in here that seem racist or whatever, yeah. then by all means, stop stop them in circulation. Then mm -hmm. we don't teach out of those six. If we use Dr. Seuss as part of our curriculum and you feel that way going forward, then just don't use those books anymore. Mm -hmm. But to try and say it'll never be published again and erase it is just is silly. And all it's going to really do, which, by the way, you know, kudos to me for buying the Dr. Seuss collection last year. Yeah, I think those books are worth like, yeah. you can sell them for like a thousand or two thousand yeah, dollars. Crazy either. on the internet. Yeah, right? that's why I just laughed about it. I was like, this is hilarious. Yeah. I know. This made well, my, that, that's my the stupid other part book collection it. just tripled yesterday. The other part of it for me is just looking at the corporations and like how now, like this, this seems to be a button for them to uh, almost hope that, that something of theirs gets. Uh, banned Attention. or yeah, it gets like canceled somehow because then the other side of that man, they get mega sales because of everybody. Yeah, thinking I feel it's like it's, out of just, stock. it's just massive virtue signaling mm -hmm. from the publisher. Look mm -hmm. at us, look what we're doing. You know what I'm saying? We're not letting. I mean, even like what we dealt with with the cover. I just that's what I feel like it is. It's like, come on, get out of here with that. That's yeah. so ridiculous. I think you have let to people choose to not just the same. Why I I was okay with the 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 analogy that you gave is because it's the same thing. Like if you're a parent. Uh, and you don't want your kids to read those, totally understand. Don't like, buy them. Yeah, don't buy them. Don't yeah. buy them and don't read them. The yeah. same way you you don't let your probably 12-year-old daughter listen to WAP or you're a bad parent. So, yeah. I mean, same I also same think thought. this. Like, I think it's important to teach your kids context, right? Yeah. So I could read this to my kid, and if, it, if I really think that this is a racist depiction of Asian people, for example, in one of the books, uh, they're saying it's very stereotypical uh, depictions of Asian people. By the way, all cartoons are caricatures. That's how cartoons are, but- our standards change, and I get that. So let's say that you're a parent, you're reading the book, you could tell your kid, 
oh, you know, in those days. Yeah, back then. And back then, this is kind of how people were. It's we obviously we're different now, but the story is really good. Teach your kids context because it's history. People yeah, this change. is yeah, this is my issue. Is I see that going all the way from like renaming everything and like like washing everything of of the past away. Uh, we th- what are we going to learn from? Like, what are we going to teach our kids that like this is how you know people did those things back then, and this is what I don't agree with when they well, did that. Uh, you know, but but to not even expose that to them, like how are they going to then become a better person if they're not introduced yeah. with, no, with old shitty ideas? No, they have to. It's that whole the whole thing that I told you guys that I was just reading in that in that book is it's safetyism. That's what everyone's yes. pushing like that in, in hopes that we're going to protect, protect, protect. But then you don't prepare them for real life. You're not preparing in, them for life because in real that's... life you're gonna you're gonna face all those things. And if you as a parent, if you can't have that conversation. With your kid, like say you know, for say my kid's reading Doctor Seuss because I love Doctor Seuss, and it gets to an age, and you know, I don't even know what it, you said. It's like it, it's it's an Asian character in the in a book, well, and one of them in particular. There's there's a couple things, but there were like uh, you know Asian uh, cartoon characters, and it was a stereotype of what you would think that they would do with an Asian character yeah. in those days, right? Yeah. But again, you, you got to teach your kids context, and you explain yeah. to them, and this is the book, and this is why. I, and, the funny part is, I don't even think a kid would even ask that. That's, I that's the thing. That's mm-hmm. the thing. I, I think you're, a kid, bringing, you're bringing attention to something that they probably wouldn't even think twice about. I think a kid today, honestly, this is the truth. I think a kid today growing up now, four-year-old, five-year-old, wouldn't even recognize that it was a stereotype of an Asian person. I think they would see it and not even know that. Yeah. Yeah. But we're like, we're so like freaked out about it. Yeah, I told you guys, I don't know if I shared this on the podcast. That's why I got really irritated with my niece who's 30 and she's like on this, this bandwagon like this too. And she was asking my little nephew who's uh, an eighth grader, how diverse his friends were. He didn't even understand the question, you know, and like all of know, a sudden you're bringing light to something. Yeah, like she and you should have seen the look on his face. Like he was so confused. Like he doesn't look at any of his friends by their race and their color or any right. of that stuff. He's got and he's got a he's very like, diverse. He's, he lives in fucking San Jose. How could you, you not? Yeah. yeah, it's almost impossible to have like a group of only one race friends right here. It's not impossible. Okay, that's an overgeneralization, but very hard to do. Yeah, and he doesn't even his mind doesn't even think that way. Yeah. You know, he's only in eighth grade. And he grew up in a time where that we're, he was just like, are they cool? Are they friendly yeah, to me? He had yeah, to ask great. her like a couple times, and she had to explain it in detail. You know, you have black friends, you have Asian friends, you have. The, and he's like, oh, 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 yeah. Well, and then he starts naming who's who like that, and then yeah. she's like, oh, good job. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, why do you even bring that to his attention at that age? You know like, what? Okay, so here's the truth. Okay, if you're a couple, you know, two or three generations deep in America, so you're not an immigrant, you're not a child of immigrants. Maybe your grandparents, or especially if your great grandparents or or before were immigrants, you here's the diversity that you actually should pay attention to: diversity of ideas. Because mm-hmm. if you're three or four generations deep in America, and you let's say you grew up in San Jose, California, the Bay Area, and let's just say you happen to be white, and your friend happens to be have darker skin, and another friend happens to be redhead or whatever. Um, you're all pretty much the same. Uh, otherwise, right? Besides the difference color and skin, you're, the, the real difference is a diversity of ideas. I, uh, I it, agree. It's not the the skin color and stuff. You've all grew up and raised here. Your parents all brought you here. You're all in the Bay Area. You all probably think the same. Why not seek out diversity of ideas? And the way the best way to do that is to take your opinion. This is something I tell my son especially. You have an opinion. That's wonderful. I like that you have opinions of things. Now seek out an opposing opinion. See if your opinion stands. See if it holds up. See if it holds up and stands the test of logic and reason and debate in a a civil manner. That will make you more diverse uh, in in the most important way, which, again, I think it's – Diversity of uh, of ideas. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, all right. Yeah. Let's talk about fitness for a second. <laughs> oh yeah. So okay. you like, did finally. Adam. Jeez. Finally. Yeah. I had to. Come on. Uh, and here's yeah. the thing too. This is what's in. It's in the news right now. It's all over the place. Everybody is talking about the Dr. Seuss thing. The WAP thing just came out right now. So for us to not discuss it and talk about it, I think it would be it would be yeah. lame not to. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So all right. So I wanted to bring up a topic I thought was kind of interesting. We talked about this in the past, but I do get comments on this uh, or or DMs, I should say. And this is where people will ask why some of their body parts develop so much faster uh, than others. Um, And I think definitely, this is what's interesting, you definitely have your general genetic, uh, you know, predisposition for how you respond to exercise. But then within that, there seems to be a pretty wide variety, you know, difference in certain body parts seem to be genetically very, uh, you know, responsive and others that seem to be much less isn't that kind of interesting? Very strange. Like for me, my upper legs, right, my quads, my hamstrings, 
they respond like the, the rest of my body doesn't even come close to responding like my upper my upper leg. And the more I throw mm. out my legs, the more they respond. I can't do that with everything else. Well, you, got, you, what do you, you guys are like that too. Yeah, well, I you know I think <clears throat> everybody is right. Everybody has that. And isn't the prevailing theory on that that you've got that's one of the best neurological connections that you have, mm. right? Your body is best connected to that muscle more than almost any other muscle, and that's why it responds. You know, it. I wonder if it's. I think is that it, might be part of it, but I also think there may be like an actual like if you did a biopsy and you look there may be more fast twitch muscle fibers there mm. may be more you know well, higher density of well them. yeah epigenetic stuff comes into play here right you had let's right. say your your isn't it that also but the environment like so if you're introducing it like uh you know when younger for say like i was like really into to bench pressing and so my chest developed uh you know more so than like i didn't do as many like leg specific exercise so like my chest to this day still responds just from barely doing anything. well that speaks to my point that's yeah. the neurological point you've you've trained your brain to fire that muscle so well so efficiently for so many years it's my arms are that way because I I overtrain the shit out of them as a yeah, young kid. That's for, like what I cared about the most. Yeah, and so now it's it's played into my favor. I don't have to hardly ever train them. If I touch them a little bit, they respond really well. But they weren't initially. Yeah, I, you know I think that plays a role, but I think there's something else too because okay. you talked about bench press, Justin. Yeah. I've tr okay in our when we started working out, especially when you know in the mid '90s when I started working out. Bench press was the exercise. Like if you did, yeah, you, that's why I focus. If you worked out, <laughs> you, you bench press. Yeah, yeah, everybody yeah. asked that question. Right. That was the measure of strength. I bench press a lot. I bet you I've done more bench press sets than you have, just because I started at such a young age. Yet your your chest and shoulders respond much better than mm. mine do. There's a there's also another component. Legs. Yeah. Yes, I work out my legs, but man, no way, dude, have I yeah, worked but, out my upper legs as much yeah, as I Yeah, but I want to challenge legs. that there, too, because I think that uh, hmm. I, I did bench press like crazy, but I, I will admit that. I didn't do bench press well for a long time. For a very long time, I did not have a chest at all. It wasn't until my late 20s did I really get and understand how to activate my chest and work my chest out. And up until that point, I didn't get a lot of development. Sure. Again, I think that plays a role, but again, I'll counter that. I bet you Justin has 10% of the time he's bench pressed, bench pressed to feel his chest, and 90% to maximize the leverage and the lift. He's an athlete. Mm. He trained for performance and strength. Yeah, which you know? I know. Well, it's got to be both factors. I mean, yes. the more you guys talk about it, because it's it obviously like I'm unlocking something that I had potential there. Mm -hmm. I had greater potential in you know uh, developing my chest just by focusing on it. You know, and then you know because I haven't had the same response. You know, in certain other body parts like. Like like my biceps, for instance. Well, yeah, yeah there's definitely a, a part that's passed down from your parents, for sure. Yeah. Your parents' parents. You know, if you have a, a long line of family that maybe squatted all the time and lifted, and they have, I mean, you probably have that more so than probably my family. I'm sure that's where some of that comes from too. So mm -hmm. I think I think it's a combination of the genetics that have been passed down by your family that you already have it, you already have the propensity to respond to that better than most people and then in addition to that you also have a great yeah, connection it's just to very it. interesting because there's there's other things too for example do you guys find and i think there's this is some general truths here but i think there's also an individual variance do you guys find that some of your body parts respond better to higher reps and other body parts respond better to lower reps have sure. you found that for yourselves mm, sure yeah isn't yeah. that weird yeah, yeah yeah like i know uh, like i can i can definitely lift low reps for my legs and get very strong mm -hmm. but if i want them to blow up 15 reps, you know, 12 yeah. reps, 20 reps. Yeah. Uh, then my legs really explode. Mm -hmm. Not true for my back. My back, heavy, heavy, five, six, seven, eight reps, and mm -hmm. it just grows. If I go 15, 20 reps, not so much. Yeah. Very, well, very interesting. Well, I also think this is why training is so nuanced too. Because totally. I think there's such a, a, a massive individual variance, which is also why – as much as I love what we do and, and we try and coach and help people as much as we can virtually, you know, nothing beats having a coach that's got his eyes on you, watching you mm -hmm. train and develop and, and listening to you respond to them, watching how you're responding to things and then adjusting accordingly. Yeah, do you guys have a body part or area that you like feel like you almost can't overtrain? Like you just train the shit out of it and it seems to recover really easy versus other area that you're like, oh, this can easily overtrain. Do you guys have anything like that? Uh, I can I can hammer my arms like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that, again, I think think that's just because I've trained them to be able to handle that much volume. When I, I overtrained the shit out of them for so many years as a kid that now, I mean, it, it's rare to get my, it's a very, I'd have to leave my arms alone for an extended period of time. You actually did when you were competing. Yeah. You, you almost didn't train your yeah, arms. Yeah. Yeah. I, I backed off of them a lot because they were, I didn't want them to overpower my shoulders, you know, and my chest. 
So yeah, you know, there's, I have to be careful. Now, if I haven't trained them for several weeks and then I train them, I'll get sore. But man, if I've been training my arms for a couple of weeks in a row consistently, it's tough to get them sore. Yeah. Very mm -hmm. strange. Right. Yeah. Now, speaking of recovery, um, the, the red light, the juice light, I've been using it now pretty consistently on areas of my body that seem a little bit inflamed or whatever. I had the inside of my right elbow uh, was, was that way for a little while. And then I had my left shoulder in the back. And so I'm just targeting those areas consistently. Mm -hmm. And it makes it, it's, it's actually hey, so weird. That speaking really of Juve, I want mm -hmm. you both to, I did this and it was, I think it was after we heard, I think Dave Asprey was the one that shared this. I think it was where I heard it first. I don't remember where I heard it. Sun hold your butt? No. Is dude, that what he does? No, <laughs> you ever seen that? That, that is not what I'm recommending. Yeah, the sun not what I'm recommending. That's it. Yeah. I, after I, I heard him, and I don't remember what podcast it was. I think it was him. Uh, talk about, you know, red light. And this, I think this was before we were working with Juve. And, the way he tested it out was he he trained the shit out of his legs and he only did red light therapy oh, on yeah. one leg. And I mean, th that's a, a good way. Get really sore in a body and part. And just do one side. And just do one side and be consistent with it and see what it, see what you notice. I did that and I noticed a difference. Mm. So I want you guys to do it so you guys can confirm with me. I'm that afraid I, to get imbalanced. I don't want to like one, one side like, <laughs> oh shit. It wasn't that dramatic. It definitely wasn't like one side was way yeah. sore. The other side, I wasn't sore at all. It's not that, it, let me tell you, it's not that magical. We're talking about like, when you talk about tools like this, we're talking about per small percentages yeah. of a difference, but noticeable. Right? Yeah, but noticeable. Uh -huh. I noticed it. That to me, it was enough for me to realize. Oh wow, it was a lot tighter, a lot more. Well, sore in the, on the past, side. in order to get uh, red light therapy, you had to spend a lot of money, go to a expensive salon or recovery facility, and it cost a lot of money. And you couldn't do it regularly because you had to drive to the place, pay them a fee or whatever. And the red, the reason being, the red light, the actual, the ones that they actually use in the studies, because you can go online and find a lot of shitty cheap you know red light devices but to get the ones that they actually use that show that they work in the past they were so outlandish and they were only commercial uh, mm -hmm. products mm -hmm. but then you know now companies like juve you could buy one for your house in fact did you guys see the the newer one the smaller yeah, one that they the have new product yeah it's the like portable the one size yeah, yeah it's yeah, yeah, portable yeah. that has like a little mount that you can put it on like by your computer yeah. stuff yeah. i mean really that's cool. how my sister uses it she uses it she has the little mini one and then she just props mm -hmm. it up when she she works on her laptop like all day long so oh, she, so she just does it while she's yeah, yeah she shoots oh, it from the left and then yeah. switches over downstairs yeah, very cool. office hey everybody i hope you're enjoying the intro we're about to get into the questions by the way this episode is brought to you by one of our guides the hard gainer guide so if you're somebody that wants to build muscle and your body's just not responding go to mindpumpfree.com and download the hard gainer guide it's totally free it'll give you some secret tips on how you can get your body to respond. All right, enjoy the second half of the podcast. First question is from Connie Chiwa. Is it true that shorter walks of 30 minutes or less will primarily burn sugar and carbs, while longer walks will primarily burn fat? Okay, yes, that's true, but no, it's not what you think it is. Okay, so here's what's true, right? Uh, when you're doing cardiovascular activity or any activity, you are burning energy, and the first type of energy that your body will burn is in the form of stored carbohydrates. Once that starts to get burned up and used, uh, and believe it or not, you have a, a, a small supply of that in your body in comparison to the supply of fat that you have that you could burn for energy. Once that is burned up, then your body starts to burn fat for energy. Now, here's why it's not what you think. It's not what you think because just because your body's burning fat for energy doesn't mean you're going to get leaner later if you're still in a calorie surplus. If you're in a calorie surplus, it just replaces it. It doesn't make any difference. I mean, keto, for example, ketogenic diet, you have no carbohydrate in your diet. You're running off of ketones, which is fat. Theoretically, you're burning fat all the time. That's can, a, and that's how they love to market it to you. Right. By the way. Can yeah. you get can you gain body fat on keto or can you not lose weight on keto or lose body fat on keto? Absolutely. Sure. So calorie deficit is necessary for fat loss, regardless of this, you know, how much cardio you do and what you're, whether you're burning sugar, carbs, or, in, or And the real benefit of comparison here is that you, a longer walk is going to burn more calories. Yes. You know, yeah. so if I had to compare a 30-minute walk versus somebody who walked for 90 minutes, well, the person who walked 90 minutes is going to burn more fat. I mean, That's right. Because they walked longer, you know, so that, and they burn more calories, which will then in, help them it be in a more of a calorie deficit than the other person. Yeah, there's, you, the, you cannot get around the simple, this is a, a rule. This is a law okay you can't get around the it's a law of thermodynamics and physics where you you must take in less calories than you burn in order for your body to search for 
fuel from itself to burn. If you're eating more calories than you're burning or the same amount of calories you're burning, your body's not going to – first off, if it, let's say you're eating more calories than you're burning and your body burned calories from its stored fat. Well, where do those extra calories go, right? Those, they have to go somewhere. In other words, energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It gets transferred. It turns mm -hmm. into other things. And uh, so you can't get around that. So you have to be in a deficit to burn body fat. And you can do all the, you know, the mixing things around, the magic you right. want, supplements and all that stuff. But if that's not happening, you're not going to lose body fat. Yeah, at the end of the day, that's all that matters. I mean, people will deplete themselves of glycogen and then do these like crazy intensive workouts and everything just to get, you know, quote unquote, burning through all the, the sugar and everything else to then, you know, the rest of the day try to burn fat. But if, if the calories, if you're still in a surplus, like it's all a wash. Well, and yeah, somebody who, for average people, this is the type of content I can't stand that gets, that gets spread in our space. It's like for the average person, this is so splitting hair, different type of conversation. It's like focus on building. You know, what, you know, it'll help better than all this. Build five pounds of muscle. That's it. Yeah. You want to you want to trump walking for thirty minutes or an hour. Or, you know, short walks versus long walks. Like Those go build fat burning materials. That's right. Go build five pounds of muscle on your body. Okay. Which by the way, five pounds of muscle distributed amongst your entire body looks like nothing. It won't look like you're a just, big difference. You're just tighter. Yes. And you your body will naturally on its own you know, burn more calories, burn more body fat than any of those walks will. Next question is from Blauer18. How can you know how good your muscle building genes are? Wrist, ankle, and neck measurements? And what would be a good measurements as opposed to bad? Okay, there's so many. I've heard of this now. Like how how accurate? Okay, so it? so there's okay, so they did some, and I can't remember the site, but they did some calculations of you know what they believe to be some of the best natural bodybuilders of all time, and what their top measurements were, and then they correlated them to their wrist, uh, ankle, um, I think wrist and ankle measurement, or wrist, ankle, and or, or and waist, yeah, or something like that. Too, yeah. And then they said, okay, this is the based off of these people, this would be your upper genetic limit to how much muscle you could build. Now, here's why that's super general. There's so many factors that go into mm -hmm. your ability to build muscle. For example, I'll give you one example, right? So, one might say your testosterone level. Uh, it might play a role in how much muscle you can build. Well, they might just did, it play would, a role. Well, they just did a study. And that's why I said that. <laughs> it does play a role, but here's here's why it's not that easy. Okay, they just did a study that showed that uh, testosterone levels didn't play uh, that big of a role in how much muscle two groups of men built. What played a bigger role was androgen receptor density. The androgen receptors are what testosterone attached to. So, in other words, if you have six hundred. If your testosterone measures at 600, but you have incredible yeah. androgen density. You got nowhere to park them. It, it, well, no, you have great <laughs> androgen density. Right, and right. someone else has 900 testosterone, but their androgen density is terrible. The 600 might actually be more uh, impactful on muscle building. So there's hormone levels. There's androgen density. There's muscle fiber uh, breakdown and density. There's myostatin. Myostatin's a thing that we learned about over the last 10 years that, you know, controls muscle. And you turn that switch off and the body just builds tons of muscle. There's muscle, you know, uh, fi uh, belly length. And there's so many factors. It's, it's very, I yeah. mean, could I look at someone just without working out and say that they probably can Be build predictive with it? Yeah, somewhat, but sometimes I can't. Like well, I've known people who were, you'd look at and you'd think, oh, that's a, that's an ectomorph. I've known this in gyms mm -hmm. and then they work out and they just build muscle so easily well, you're like whoa i, I, yeah, wouldn't I just that. feel like this is always the case with the fitness industry is trying to uh you know catalog all of this and try and simplify everything so you could uh basically you could you could have these general standards so mm -hmm. where do i fit and then that way you can get marketed to and like right. kind of shuttled into products or different type of training methods or uh nutrition uh, and they've done this with somatotypes and they've mm -hmm. done kind of generalizations that people sort of identify and relate with with. And so it's like, uh, you know, something that kind of seems like it's logical, but th again, th these are so generalized that there's no way you can be like that accurate when you're predicting these. Well, things. there's so many variables, right? There's so many variables with that, but I will, you know, I, in my experience, I, I would say that a majority of my clients that had big wrist, big ankles, big bones, basically is what you're big boned. Uh, had an had an easier time building muscle, but a harder time burning body fat, and the same is true on the other end, right? So my clients that had really small wrists, really small ankles, 
tend to have a harder time building muscle, but had an easier time burning fat. Mm. Now, there's always an exception to the rule on both both sides of that. There's many other variables that trump that, like your testosterone talk, your discipline. How about your behaviors and discipline too? How about somebody who doesn't have as much potential to build muscle, so they had to build more work ethic and discipline around nutrition, and because of that, they have a better lifestyle and habits and now see more results. So right. there's, there's always something to counter that argument, but generally speaking, and it's a total overgeneralization, I do think that most of my clients that were that had that were big boned had a harder time burning body fat than like our my quote unquote ectomorph type of, of clients. Yeah, and then you also have uh, you know the whole, the question about measurements. What are good measurements? I mean, do you care what the tape measure says, or do you care about how you look? Like a really lean sixteen inch arm on a guy is impre natural, right? Is impressive to most people. Most people, if you saw a man with a lean muscular sixteen inch arm. That would look more impressive than a guy with an 18-inch arm whose body fat is, you know, 18% body fat, right? Well, it just doesn't look as good. So that's one of those things as well. Now, I can't answer and say, you know, what would be considered like really muscular lean for most, and this is just from my experience of reading, you know, for years and years about lifters and this and that. For men, you know, if you're natural and you get your arms up to 17 or 18 inches, that's a and lean, relatively lean. That's a big ass uh, arm. That's a very big arm, natural. The, the twenty inches that usually comes from super genetics and, and anabolic steroids. But again, I mean, it's so different from person to person. And getting lean, I've done this. I've lost fifteen pounds, worked out, and everybody comes up to me and says, "Oh my gosh, how did you gain so much muscle?" And the, I didn't. The difference is, I look like I gained a bunch of muscle because I'm so well, much leaner. Exactly. Each each pose uh, the pros and cons, right? So each side has like if you're if you have a bigger bone, you may your arms may naturally look bigger or put on muscle easier, but like so I, I mean my wrist and ankles are like a 13-year-old girl. So I have like these tiny little petite freaking wrists and and and, and they're ankles. dainty. dainty mm -hmm. ankles, right? Mm -hmm. Now the benefit of that though is like when all the years of building muscle and working towards that and then when I get on physique, it when I was competing, Man, it looked way more pronounced. I have this tiny little waist because that's my bone structure. I have a very small waist. I have tiny wrists. So the muscle that I did put on it looks more pronounced. It's exaggerated. Because it's, yeah, yeah, it's more exaggerated than the guy that had the boxier square waist and the thicker wrist. and the thick. He may even have more muscle, but when you look at it and we present it on stage, I look better for those reasons. So, you know, they all have, they all have their pros and cons. Yeah, I think, I think uh, getting hung up on... You know, is it easier for me or harder for me, or is it better to have this or that? Eh, yeah. You know, the old there was an old uh, body. This is like from back in the day. I'd say in the nineteen. This is probably the nineteen thirties. Uh, they, they they there was a standard for balance that they used, and they used to say that your arm. And they actually used to do this to see if their body was balanced. Your arm, your neck, and your calf measurement need to be the same. If your arm, neck, and calf measurement are the same. Then you back to those standards back then. You are balanced. You have a balanced physique. <laughs> yeah. Kind of interesting. Yeah. Next question is from Forever Strong Cairo. I'm an old has been and just want to look and feel like I can still fuck shit up. Uh -oh. <laughs> hey, what program will help with that? Oh boy, strong. Yeah. That okay. So it depends. I feel like Map Strong. Map, Map Strong is for building just impressive muscle uh, and strength. It is very. Effective. It's funny. We came out with that program and it was a sleeper. We didn't realize so many people would like it. And it's one of our most uh, positively commented programs. Super underrated. Super yeah. underrated. Because right away you think strongman competition and you automatically do what everybody does naturally, which is I don't identify with a strongman. Yeah, yeah. I have no desire to look like them. I have no desire to compete in that. So you don't go get that program. And you don't follow that. But that type of training, yeah, you want to fuck shit up. Like yeah. that, I mean, the the work sessions that are in there, yep. the type of lifts that you're doing, the upper back it's development that you get from strength. it. Yes. Like you're lifting awkward things and in different positions that are more relatable to actual objects you're going to pick up in life and, you know, trees and rocks and, uh, you know, like shifting bags mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. So it really preps you for that. So I would agree with you guys with that. My other suggestion would have been, you know, performance just because 
because you could move, uh, you know, explosively and fluidly in which, you know, turns you into a badass, in my opinion. Yeah. And, and, and here's, okay. And they just want to look at aesthetic and split. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Which I, I, I like that, you know, yeah, wanna, true. I'll, I'll show no go. You know what I'm saying? Like, I look like I can well, fuck you look shit up. You know what I'm yeah, if I look, if you look at stage, I look like I can fuck shit up. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But I wasn't racing and beating nobody anyway. Yeah. You know? No, and, okay. And of course, it needs to be appropriate for you, right? So if you're a beginner, um, then maybe Map Strong wouldn't be the best program for you. You might do like a Maps Anabolic. And he's not. I know who this is. Yeah, oh, you do? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, okay. he's a very experienced lifter. He's yeah, been lifting then for I would, a long time. I agree with you then. Matt and he Strong. understands mobility very well, so he's a definitely... Right. Oh, he's a chiropractor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, you know, he's a smart guy. He's been to a couple of our talks and stuff like that, so he knows what the hell he's doing. Uh, I, I definitely would push him in the direction of Strong. I think Strong is probably the way to go. Next question is from Pat of Blanc. Why do most calories and macro calculators still use the old school one gram per pound of body weight and even above 1.2 grams while cutting when most recent studies show no benefits for muscle building or fat loss in going above 0.7 grams per pound? Okay, it is true that studies show that you don't derive any extra muscle building benefits from eating more than around 0.7 grams of protein per body weight. However, is it per body weight or is it per, per kilogram of muscle? No, 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 no. It's per pound of body weight. When they use kilogram, then it's a different. Uh, it's a different. See, number. I feel like that's the the metric that uses 0. 0.7 to 0. 0.8 is when they're talking about kilograms. No, that's the old. Uh, that's the old crappy one. This is these are the studies that show high protein. At, you know, build muscle. Because I know Lane like shared that. a study a while back that there there's some there's some benefits to the upper limits of one, up to 1.5. Well, here's where the benefits, I think, most of them come from. Because there's a lot of studies that have been done on this, okay? And yeah, you can find the outlier studies, but the vast majority of them, the consensus is roughly 0.7 grams of protein per pound of body weight. Anything more than that, and you don't derive any more muscle building benefits. Does that mean you're not going to get any more benefits? Not necessarily, because here's something that protein provides. By the way, it has to be appropriate for you. What I mean by that is some people eat too much protein, and it messes up their digestion. If that's you, don't go in this direction, okay? Mm -hmm. that, that will make your gains. Bad digestion will mess you up more than anything else. But if you're cool with it, eating more protein has this benefit right here. You might not build more muscle, but boy, is it an appetite suppressant. Out of all the macronutrients, mm -hmm. protein is very, very satisfying. So if you're trying to drop body fat, it helps a lot to eat a lot of protein. You're less likely to overeat. I also think it's really tough, you know, for most people, unless you weigh a buck fifteen, it's really tough to hit a one to one. And so if you're targeting one or one point five or probably 1 .2, fall short, but you'll be exactly good. some days you're gonna fall short and you're gonna be just fine. And or maybe even days you go way lower, 0. 0.6, but then the next day you hit one point two or one point five mm -hmm. and it all because it's so funny. We we look at everything in these like small control groups and studies and and the day is twenty four hours. Like the body doesn't work that way. It doesn't know the difference of day 20 or hour 25 or 29. It's like it's over the course of a, a longer period of time of that. So, and the reality is most people, most people, not bodybuilders, most average clients that I train under consume protein. So I always like to push them to one-to-one. -one. I always, even yeah. though I know that 0.7 is, is all they need, I'm pushing them in the direction of one-to-one -one because I know that they're going to fall short some days. Yeah. It's, it's not easy. I mean, you know, I, as of the other day, I weighed about 211, 212 pounds. I don't eat 212 grams of protein a day. That's a lot. I eat probably 160 to 170 grams of protein, and that's me chasing protein. I mean, you know, 200. How many chicken breasts would be 200 grams of protein? Not to mention that I think there's a lot of benefit. And some days you actually hitting 250, and then another day you only hitting 50. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. So we we've talked about this before. I I think where this you get in trouble is you're hitting these numbers of you know, two gram one point above one point five to two, and you're a, and you're one of those guy competitors who is weighing it, measuring it every day, and consuming that or above. And you've now you've married this. The average person that's just kind of trying to figure out, like, oh, where should my protein mm -hmm. be? Targeting a number like where, one. Wasn't is fine. there like I, I think I remember back when a lot of these biohackers were trying to really press the fact that you know more than point seven, like you're going to get into like kind of uh, like cancerous uh, no. type of out through the mTOR pathway and all this kind of stuff that they're proposing in terms of it being carcinogenic at a, at a certain point. Yeah, so it, it, when they start to make the cancer arguments, it's silly because in a pro-cancer environment, 
Okay, so you're unhealthy. Yeah, yeah, pro cancers, you can make the case for every macronutrient. Yes, being unhealthy. If you're if you're, uh, yeah. you're inflamed, you have this was big for a while. Pre cancer cells going on. You're you're not healthy, um, and then you have a tumor that's growing in your body, and you eat a lot of protein or a lot of carbs. You're going to fuel it. You're going to fuel or the a lot growth of, fat. of it. Yeah. You're going to fuel the growth of the cancer. Less so fat, but yeah, not even even fat. Now, if you're healthy, uh, then you're fine. You're totally fine. You're not going to be fueling. That just okay. Look, how about how about this? Uh, estrogen, testosterone, right? Male and female hormones in a pro-cancer environment. Depending on the cancer, both of those hormones can fuel cancer, right? So if you have high testosterone and you have prostate cancer, one of the ways they prevent the cancer from growing is to block your testosterone. If you have breast cancer, they'll put you on uh, drugs that block the effects of estrogen. Does that mean? Estrogen and testosterone are cancer-producing hormones, or they're, they're pro-cancer. No, mm -hmm. but in the context of cancer, lots of things then become, uh, you know, drivers of cancer. Protein uh, being one of them, but so is carbs. So is you know, pretty much well, anything else. So, which is why they've, I think, didn't they accept fasting as now a protocol? Right? Yeah. Isn't yeah. fasting now a protocol for cancer? It is, and uh, um, there's there was that one study that was done that showed that people who fasted before doing yeah, chemo in conjunction with chemo, yeah, right? killed way more cancer yeah. cells and protected more uh, of the healthy cells. Um, so you know, fasting's got some interesting uh, implications for uh, or applications, I should say, for uh, for cancer. You know that you know in Chinese medicine, fasting was one of the ways they treated cancer mm -hmm. Bef you know, for thousands of years. They they saw a tumor. They have the person starve. I mean, obviously, you're starving the, the tumor as well. So right. anyway, look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. So you can come find us on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find all of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.